everybody. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Sam Healy. Welcome back. I feel like somebody got subdued right before him and he was bubbling over, Samuel. I was talking about memes and you told me to shut up. <laughs> okay, so it's because it's time for the show to start. Memes. All right, so for those of you tuning memes. in, uh, Board Game Breakfast, a bi weekly show where we talk about board games. A couple of things, if you've missed them, first of all, on Board Game Geek, huge Jack Mass Memorial Fund auction with some like unbelievably cool things there from publishers mm-hmm. and designers. If your favorite publisher doesn't have something there, email them and tell them they should. All the money goes to charity. I've been, like everything I've been on so far, I think I've been outbid. Mm-hmm. But there's some really cool stuff on there. Or you could put stuff up of your own or just spread the word. Yeah. Secondly, Dice Tower Retreat registration goes live tomorrow. It's going to sell out really fast because a lot of the rooms have already sold. We let the people from last year go first. But there's going to be some left over. But keep an eye on our channel. We'll be announcing that on our Twitter and Facebook feeds. I have something else. Oh. News. So we're about to go into the news, but we're going to be putting up a short video with like bullet point news. Just a very, I think it's like four minute long video that's going up after this show. And we'll be doing that once a week just so you can see the news. Did I get all announcements? Sure. Dice Tower Con, there's still room left there to go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, well, let's get to the news. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, fellow gamers. So there's something I'd really like to address within the community here. I saw a tweet. A little (laughs) foreshadowing there. The the real news here. (laughs) Okay, so. That's real news too, man. This is the the next next bit of the news. Well, I'm at the, you're right. That is real news. I didn't mean to. It's just like, that's not, I I did that once. I edited the show and I one time did it backwards and I put them first, I think. And then your news. Then it was like, uh, uh, it threw us for a loop a little bit. Well, anyway. I did it right. It's coming. Anyhow, so the news. There's a lot of news. In fact, some of the news I've even held back. We'll talk about it next week just because there's so much going on. All right. Ooh. I'm just going to take a nap and then watch that four-minute video. Here we go. OP Arena. Oh, hold up. Now, OP this I played Arena. a long time ago. Uh, to a <laughs> Sam, you would like this. This is just every character. It's like a Take That style <laughs> yes. game. And every character in this game is overpowered. Over, overpowered. Right? Yeah. Um, it's oh, apparently for the OP. last 8 billion years, the OP arena has been floating at the center of the M82 galaxy for the most intense fights of all time. You need to, you're sending your dudes into this arena where they will <laughs> fight, and you need to get 30 victory points by doing damage or killing dudes. I love the subtitle. An epic battle royale of absurd proportions. Yeah. So this one's taken a while <laughs> for them to get to the market, actually. Okay. I don't know that this is your style game because it is just straight take that, take but that, it yeah. knows what it is. Sure. So, all right. That's like such an in title, OP Arena. Yeah. A lot of people aren't even going to know what that is. No, I, I, disag- I it, disagree. I disagree. OP spans across a lot of different Because, yeah, though. kids, anyone under the age of 30, they say OP all the time. My kids use it for everything. Really? Mm-hmm. It, they'll use it outside of gaming. Yeah. Like, I got to the, I got, like, uh, me and my wife will go home, my wife's car is better. And the kids are like, well, she was OP. She had a better car. And it's like, ah, oh, and they use it all the yeah, time. Okay, okay. All right, Dice Masters, Spider-Man team-up campaign. For the five of us who still care, there's another Dice Master set coming out. size of it. Uh, and I'm assuming there will be the incorrect amount of dice. For <laughs> the number more, of cards. You gotta get more than you than you need. But it you is including Heroes for Hire and Cloak and Dagger. There's a new Cloak and Dagger TV series coming, but I forget where it is. Is it on I the think Marvel it's thing? Been out. I saw like one episode or one and a half. And Was it good? No. Not for me, but I don't I'm not a good judge of TV. I don't know. Alright. Thought it was really slow. Munchkin Warhammer for Sam. You're the Warhammer guy. Come on, man. This yeah. is like right now. What a what a what a duality. This, He's like, well, ooh, Warhammer. Of, it's Age of oh, Sigmar, Munchkin. too. So it's the fantasy. It's not the 40K. So That's good. Yeah, I mean. You like Age of Sigmar. I do. I feel like doing that uh, Simpsons bit. But it's bit. Munchkin. It's like so, that Simpsons like, Warhammer, that's good. It's also Munchkin. That's bad. <laughs> but it's set in the new Age of Sigmar fantasy. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> but it's but, Munchkin. That's, That's bad. bad. <laughs> you can't keep saying that to Munchkin. <laughs> Anyhow, it's coming out. This is coming out in November. Uh, the eight realms of Warhammer Age of Sigmar form a new battleground for Munchkin players to explore. By which we mean kill monsters and take their stuff. Yeah. I, 
I'd be willing to try it. That's good. That's good. <laughs> I don't think you're going to like it. <laughs> That's bad. All right, moving on. <laughs> Another expansion Ooh. for Terraforming Mars, oh, Turmoil, wow. in which politics come to Mars. Go figure. All right. I actually, so a couple things about this one. From what I understand, there's three things. Last expansion, anyone believe that? No? Sure. Okay. Biggest expansion and going to Kickstarter. Oh, okay. Huh. Which is different than the previous ones have. Uh, it's going to include new corporations, new projects, and global events that will... Okay. Yeah. That makes me All think right. of Red Faction, the video game. Oh, okay. This is going to be very... This, this will do extremely well on Kickstarter. Well, for yeah, sure. I mean, it's it's because of the game. All right, Asmodee North America will now be exclusively distributing. See, come on, <laughs> products. Oh, come on, man. So yeah. So uh, as a side note, in other news, apparently the name of the company is Come On. I come was on. told this by the company, so we're gonna try to say Come On instead of Simon, but we'll it will take us years they to get that apostrophe. changed. You they think need, so? They need an apostrophe in, in between the C and the M. I think I still think they have one of the best logos in the business. No, yeah, they do. Not it's Asmodee. A good logo, yeah. Asmodee's yeah. logo is really boring. It, well, it, it's really, Asmodee's logo Asmodee's is super logo's corporate. Very business, yeah, it's yeah. very, yeah, yeah, very corporate. Yeah, I'm Asmodee. We know. <laughs> yes. Anyway, yes, so sir. Uh, come on, has you know huge amounts of games. They're still going to be kickstarting their own games. Mm -hmm. They're still going to be designing them. It's not Asmodee did not buy them. This just means yeah. if you want to get their products, you got to go through Asmodee before Asmodee buys Alliance. After the fact. <laughs> Asmodee is not buying Alliance. That's just if me. You, uh, <laughs> That's just me <laughs> projecting. If you back the game on Kickstarter, you'll still get it from Come On. But yeah, after that fulfillment's done, then it, it lands in Asmodee's lap and they distribute. All right, Dune is coming back. Dune. No, no that's Doom. That's okay. Doom. <laughs> anyway. Oh. Dune. Do you guys know what year Dune was first published? Nineteen seventy-five. What did you say? Not thirty-five. Not the, I'm just kidding. Let me say. You the mean book. the book? No, the game. The game. Uh, was that close on the book? No. 1953. I don't know when the book came 76? out. 76? 1979. Okay. Well, that's you're close, close, though. That's still a pretty old game, and that makes it 40 years old at this point in time. Ooh. So, anyhow. 40 years old is Designed by Bill Eberly, Jack Kittrich, and Peter Alaka, who are the same three designers who designed Cosmic Encounter. Yeah. Uh, this has not been able to be republished in the past because the Herbert estate has been really dorky about the whole thing. They refused to work with anybody mm -hmm. to the point where Fantasy Flight just said, we're remaking the game in our own universe, called it Rex. This was back in 2012. Mm -hmm. uh, that game did not do extremely well, just as this one will not do extremely well because the game is that complex. It really only works with five to six players right. uh, and it can take anywhere from three to six hours. There's certainly an audience for that game. A lot of excited fans. I get that. I just don't think it's going to... You're not going to see it played all the time everywhere. Just by the very it's, nature it's, of the game. This is exciting news for sure. A lot of people have wanted this game to come back out. Uh, and this is simply going to be closer to the original game. Yeah. Now, we don't know what artwork or what they're using. There is a movie coming out. So that's in next year. There's a new movie. So will this use the artwork from that movie? That would be what I would think. Well, because, because it's Gale they, Force 9. Right. And Gale Force 9 does a lot of screen captures. Oh. Yeah, right? I hope they don't do that. No, come on, man. You screen don't captures see... can be done well they in some be. games. I'm not I'm not a completely opposed to them as you are. I am. But, oh, I'd I'm rather you, have our Fantasy artwork. Flight's ruining me on this because of their, like, their Star Wars stuff. They draw pictures of Vader and Luke and all that, and it yeah. looks really I good. I like that. I yeah. like that better. All right. A sequel to Tokaido is coming out from Funforge. Antoine Bowser, same designer. Mm -hmm. Namiji. Namiji. Or Namiji. Namiji. So this, uh, once again, you're taking a trip. In Tokaido, you're walking. In this one, you're boating. Uh, okay. It or uses the funny. same movement Just thing as it's pr Namiji. that the Namiji. Tokaido did, where you can move as far as you want, but you can't go back. And then there's some push your luck stuff in it. That koi fish looks like it has a Japanese flag on its forehead. The koi fish looks like it can eat the person. That's a or, pretty big and fish. And the entire paper And a, and a goldfish that big? 
is what terrifying. Eat you? It's terrifying, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Anyhow, I'm I'm pumped about this one. I Tokaido did pretty well. So this game looks like it would be interesting. Yeah, Tokaido's a, a nice game. I might be more excited if it was like a uh, Takenoko spinoff hmm. myself. I like that a little bit better, I think. Oh, I agree. Tokaido's just kind of a peaceful... I mean, in, in, it is, and that's kind of what they were going for, which is fine. It's supposed to be very relaxing, like, you know, uh, enjoy the journey kind of game. Still, gorgeous artwork. I might enjoy this. Um, yeah, it was cool to see a, a follow-up. Do you remember back when a white box was unique? Mm-hmm. No longer. Yeah. I don't know if this is on your news. Let me interject here for a second. But uh, there's also a, uh, if you have any more Antoine Boza news, that maybe I am stepping on your toes. I don't think so. There's also, this is a sequel to Takaido. He's also putting out a reworking of ghost stories eventually. Oh, sure. The reason I don't have that in the news is because it's... it's real, real early news. Well, we mentioned it a few episodes ago, but until I have some more concrete exactly what it is... I'm just Which excited. I think might be in next week's episode. We'll see. I'm just excited. <laughs> Above board. This is a new TV show that's coming somewhere. Um, Travis Oates is the director. You guys have met him. I know you have because we were at a meal together. Yes. Uh, caveat, I will be on parts of this show at times. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing this. They're describing it as, um, what's, the t what's the car racing show? Top Gear. Top Gear. Top yeah. Gear, but for board games. Sounds like a good idea. They certainly, a lot of people involved really know about board games. Yeah. Uh, they have a lot, and that's cool. Samuel, for you! <laughs> a talisman. Super villains edition. <sighs> so here's the deal. I, will, I, I told them that when this comes out, we'll probably play it on our Testing Tuesday Live. Because I think we could get into the whole Batman yeah, theming of I it. Guess so. Yeah, and in this one, I think you're supposed to be one of the villains going around Arkham releasing... Baddies. Right, and then you get, you're trying to become the King Arkham by getting to the middle. So, apparently there was an expansion for Talisman. I don't know which one because I only never played any of them. But there was a bad guy and that would go around the board. Okay. Well, they added that expansion to this one. So, Batman is running around beating Batman up on you. Batman is the bad guy. I agree with that. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, sure. anyhow. He's Clearly. mean to penguins. This is coming out in June. And, and 13 like plastic himself. character figures. The first evildoer to subdue Batman and release the other dangerous inmates wins the game. Oh. All right. <laughs> there you go. All right. In other news none of us care about, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the board game, has an ga expansion oh. coming out. Friends oh, and Eric, Frenemies. Eric would care about Eric, this, Eric right? Summer was here to burst through this right. table. Actually, I don't know that he liked this. I don't. But it's Buffy. No, but it's Jasco. But it's Buffy. But it's... Well, we're going to do that good bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. The I mean, only thing this needs is... Uh, he loves Powerpuff Girls also. I know he likes that show a lot. Powerpuff versus Buffy. That would be... Uh, that's a clash right there. Yeah. <laughs> Coming to Smash Up. <laughs> All right. Black now, this next one I'm true. very pleased about. Excited. Judge Dread Helter Skelter. That's cool. This is a Wildlands game. So it's based on the system of Wildlands, but it's oh, Judge Dredd. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> Wildlands is a pretty cool system. That's cool. Although it's a little weird to me how this will work with Judge Dredd. You're, like, you're running around collecting what? Criminals? Instead yes. of yeah. crystals? Yeah, that works. You just said it. You nailed it. <laughs> I am the They're in rewrites right now because you said that. I do like this artwork a lot. That's a cool picture. Well, apparently <laughs> Osprey Games just landed a deal, or I'm sure not just, but landed a deal for Judge Dredd. <laughs> Because this is the second game from them that they've reworked. That's true. To Next. have a Judge Dredd theme. They did the Lost Expedition as mm -hmm. Judge Dredd. We actually played that yeah. live on one of our Testing Tuesdays. And now this, um, based what's, on Wildlands. What's the uh, cryptid? Judge Dredd cryptid. Yeah, why not? Find someone on the island using logic. Yeah, <laughs> like Mega City 1. You're in Mega City 1 and you need to figure out where they are. Sure. Okay. Bring it. Anyway, I'm I'm pretty pumped about this one. This one is coming out October of this year. That looks cool. So. Yeah. All right. Brain Games, who's best known for Ice Cool, has a game called Pegasus coming out. <laughs> so the way... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, you can't even. Pegasus. You can't even say that without. So, laughing. from what I could tell for this game is, when you see one animal of a type, so let's say you find the giraffe gorilla, okay, the giraffe gorilla, right? So if you had that, or the giraffe, you need to find the opposite creature on the board. Okay. So you'll find the gorilla af. Sure. 
Enough said about that. So they're also. As long as I don't have to be the one to say it out loud. They're also coming out with a game called Snowman Dice. Snowman Dice. So apparently, Brain Games has decided they're just going to trademark snow, snow. and cold and ice That's and it. stuff. Done. This is, I think, their fourth game in that. Yeah. In that sort of that setting. Looks, that looks cute. Yeah, it does. Yeah, this you're going to simultaneously roll dice to build a snowman. So then you got to push it to the North Pole token in the middle of the table. But other people can roll a snowball on their dice and then use it to knock over your opponent's snowman. I wonder if there's like actual <laughs> flicking there of There probably dice. is. Oh, oh boy. This next right. game is not quite what it sounds like. Tentacle Town. Each player is an adventurer who arrived on an unsettled land to found a new town, but then there's giant tentacles coming out and grabbing stuff. Oh, Cthulhu claimed it first. Yeah, so you're trying to become the most famous resident, and you're recruiting the citizens to go and hunt these tentacles, which makes it sound very similar to that fire game. Uh, yeah, yeah. A little bit. What is it? Who, who, what company is this from? The company is Monster Fight Club. I don't know that 60 company. Minutes. Yeah, I don't cool. know what else they've done. I love the cover. That's a great looking cover. I like that cartoony look. It's very light, very breezy looking. You know, it's it takes a subject matter that's kind of bizarre and makes it silly. Yeah, sure. I like that. All right, speaking of Talisman, Talisman itself is coming back. The actual straight up. This is from Pegasus Spiel, and they said they're bringing out fourth edition. So the picture we have here is a Fantasy Flight Games version, but I'm pretty sure they're just slapping the Pegasus logo on it. Right. This, they said, he told me this is going to be their big Gen Con release. Mm -hmm. They fully expect there to be a line for it, and I think that's true. Really? I just don't think we'll be in the line. Right. But is there Batman in this one? Where would they? No. What are, they what are they changing about? Are they just nothing? They're just bringing it back. I'm telling you, Talisman has this big following. Yeah, it's, yeah right. Yeah, right. but the people who are the following already had it, right? Yeah. They only have it once or twice, though. You got to get it again. Wow. Okay. You got to. Understood. All right, new company coming up to fight Hasbro. Funko. Now Funko is known for those dolls that are ridiculously Funko popular. Pop Fun things. Funko Pop things. They're super popular. Yeah. I. I, I told you I met that guy. Cut my hair, and he was talking about how he had like 130 of them. I was like, well, maybe you should buy a car. I don't know. They're they're very they're very collected. Well, they're not cheap either, and they yeah. make them for everything. Yeah, yeah, right. Type right. in Funko Pop and the name of a pop culture thing, and it probably exists. Right. Do you like them? Uh, I don't collect. Do you have any? No, no. I I've don't. got a Captain America and a Han Solo one. And those were given to me. I didn't buy them, so. Yeah, I might get something to put on the shelf here, sure, I guess. I don't right. think I have any. Because, again, they're, they're kind of pricey. I look at them, and I'm like, ah, I don't know. Right. Uh, I know but my, anyway. my uh, brother-in-law, though, has probably hundreds of them. It's ridiculous. Well, they're getting into the board game business, right? right. And so they're talking about building up a board game business to go up against Hasbro and Mattel. Cool. So they started this by buying Forrest Prusan Creative, FPC, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is a good start. That's the company that made Villainous and Harry Potter's Hogwarts Battle, okay. um, Choose Your Own Adventure, that Fantasy Flight has. Z-Man, um, I think. Or Z-Man. Well, yeah, Z-Man. Yeah, sorry, sorry, so the, and they have money to throw on this. Right. It says here that they their revenue money. was $500 million. That's um, <clears throat> And also they have a built-in audience. They do, right, You mentioned right, right. Funko Pop, people know. They're, every geek convention I go to, even board game ones, there is a booth with Funko Pops. And yes. that, like, yeah. like, here's the board games and Funko Pop stuff. <laughs> All right, anyway. So I wonder if they're going to be putting out games using these proper, I mean, not the properties per se, but like the look, the style of their original moneymaker here. I don't know, someone just said here in the comments that there's a Funko documentary on Netflix worth watching. That's cool. I'll probably watch it yeah, now because I like out. that sort Thank of thing. You. Thank you. I'll check that out. All right. That's my news. Now for the real news. <laughs> Hello, fellow gamers. So there's something I'd really like to address within the community here. I saw a tweet and it was by at Take Your Chits, Christian Kang. And I'm actually, I'm just going to pull it up here so you guys can see right here. And I just want to know if the 58 bidders right here know that Wingspan will be available again at some point within the US and worldwide. But more importantly, I wanna know if the person who won this bid knows just how many Kickstarters they could have backed. 
Featured this week, we have Copenhagen by Queen Games. This is for 2-4 to four Tetris 99 players that are looking for social interaction, as players will be using polyomino tiles and card collection to build buildings for 20-40 to 40 minutes. In this puzzle-style game that rewards players for building with windows, collecting colors, and completing rows. The base price for this game is $40, and it comes with sturdy... 3 millimeter cardboard pieces. Aw, yeah. Now, speaking of building things, how about tiny civilizations in the palm of your hand with Age of Civilization by Ice Makes. This is for one to four people looking to play a civilization game in less than three days, as players will be tasked with the growth of three out of 47 different civilizations for about 30 to 60 minutes. Keep in mind, this is also a pocket-sized game that will only cost you $27, bringing you changing actions over six rounds while also packing a whole lot of game in a little box. Next up, we have Glenmore 2 Chronicles by Fun Tales, which is a tile-laying game for two to four Scots looking to make barley for whiskey, sell cattle, cooperate with other clans, and control locks and castles to collect fame for 90 to 120 minutes. Now, the really cool thing about this game is that not only does it come with eight different expansions to play, but it is also a refresh and improvement from the original Glenmore. The starting price for this game runs for $67. Now, for reprints and expansions, we have... Shadows of Killforth by Hall or Nothing Productions. This is a cooperative RPG style game with a modular board system made from cards that has been updated from its original game called Touch of Death. A fresh copy of this game will run you $66 and for those who purchase the original, there's a new expansion set for the Eastern Frontiers. Lastly, we have... Root, the Underworld expansion by Leader Games, which is offering new boards, super cute vagabonds, new factions, and a substitute deck to play with. Prices for these goodies start at $50, and of course, this is a great time to pick up the base game. Thanks so much for joining me this week, guys. If you have a copy of Wingspan at your home, make sure it gets up on eBay immediately. <laughs> Other than that, if you want to know any more about any of the Kickstarters that you saw here today, make sure to check out my channel at gloryhound.com and take a look at my live show that I do on Fridays about these Kickstarters specifically. So if you want to know more about them or you want to comment on what you guys think about them, I would love to have you there. Other than that, I will see you guys all next week. It's 1985. West Germany teeters on the brink of defeat. The American Fifth Corps is all but crushed, and the Soviet armed forces rush to the French border. That is, however, only the war that most see. There is another war. A dark war. Firstly, this game is an RPG. Now you're saying, Dan, why are you doing an RPG? Well, it's role-playing in World War Gone Mad, Dark War. I'm the war guy. Plus, it's my segment. Dark War Rebooted. Role-playing in a world war gone mad. This is a game designed by Mark H. Walker, published by Tiny Battle Publishing. This game comes with a 17 by 22 inch battle map, 70 chits, 18 full color action cards, and 10 standee bases. Now, as in all RPGs, you have to generate your character, but Mark makes it easy. He has pre-generated characters, so you can jump in right away. And if you're new to RPGs, no problem. He's got three pages explaining to you what is an RPG. So with Dark War Rebooted, in 56 pages, you get a story. And like I said, if it's your first time, a help with what is an RPG section. You also get a backstory of what is Dark War, an explanation of the game, how to generate your character, instructions on movement, combat, and action rounds, and usually when you buy or you get into RPGs, you gotta buy another book for, for the beasts, the animals. Here, you have it. And again, I'm being redundant. Usually when you get into RPGs, you gotta buy many books. The Game Master book, it's in there. And as in any RPG, you're gonna need dice. A whole bunch of dice. And you know what, I just thought about something. What other RPG gives you action cards? And playing Dark Wars, you're gonna learn about line of sight, opportunity fire. You're gonna learn how to melee, and you're also gonna learn how to flank an enemy. 
Besides a nice big color map, you get 70 chits that you can either lay them flat or stand them up. So if you want to get into an RPG in World War 3 fighting vampires, demons, and zombies, Dark War is perfect for you. Mark walks you right through it. Thank you for watching, and if you want to know more about war games, please check out my channel, No Enemies Here. Welcome back. We're going to talk about stereotypes. I think I just pushed. I think I just pulled the table to He's me. Strong. I am the beast. Is I'm my strong. new stereotype. <laughs> no, not the beast. We're going to talk about the martyr, or at least what I'm calling the martyr. The martyr is that guy that it doesn't matter how good he's doing, he's still acting like he's doing horribly, or the the game is coming after him, or. Stop picking on me because, you know, that guy, he's the guy that just always seems to be doing very well. I um, mean, seems to be doing very, or he's acting like he's doing very badly, mm -hmm. but he's not. But he wants everybody to think that he is so that they'll leave him alone and he can win. I have some biographical information on the martyr. He was born in 1974, birthday May 15th. Um, that is possible. I have been accused of this. And... I would like to say in my defense. Oh, oh. <laughs> and this has nothing to do with why. It took longer than it should have because I was thinking you were talking about Jason, but yeah. okay. Well, that's. Oh, Jason is really bad. Did Jason this. does this too. But anyway, th I'm not talking about a person who is, 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 is talking about why he dislikes the game, which is what I am usually doing. We got to come up with a name for that. Yeah, you do. Um, the disliker. The critic. No, it's no. really easy. The <laughs> critic. Yeah, right. But um, I, I've, I've talked about why I dislike a game during it, and people have called me, you know, uh, a lot of things. Eeyore and, and all this other kind of stuff. Fine, whatever. I don't care. That's not really what I'm talking about. I'm talking more about the person who is trying to diffuse attention away from him by saying that he's doing poorly when he really isn't. Well, to be fair, Almost everyone does that in to a, a to degree, risk right? style game or whatever. Right. You're going to say, oh, no, I'm not winning. Even when it's clear. And we usually do it as a joke. Like, look, clearly I'm not winning. I think that's the difference. So the difference is you know you're lying through your teeth. Right. I but think the martyr almost buys into it. It's like this woe yeah. is me thing. Yes. You really put it out front. You know what I mean? And it's oh, like. Oh, bother. Yeah, it's like, you know, oh, like one thing goes wrong for you. And even though somebody over there just had, like, half their empire collapse, <laughs> you still bemoan the one die yeah. that wrecked you. Yes. Wrecked right, right, right. That's the difference, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. They, I, I think, like you said, I think this one specifically, they bought their own lie. Yeah. That's what it is. At right. the end of the game, they're like, I won? You're like, <laughs> come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now... I, I have had games, so I'm, I'm not saying that this is always going to be the case when somebody's doing this, because I have had games where I win a game, and I'm like, how did that happen? Again, to my first statement no, when I started but this see, that's thing, the thing. I, feel I, I have had games where that's happened, where I, where I had no idea that I was going to win, and it turned out that I was. Mm -hmm. But there are people like, you know, Jason, who win consistently on a normal basis, Mm-hmm. And yet they still act like this. This is how I, this is one of my first games with Jason. We were playing that dinosaur game where you move dinosaurs on an island and you're trying to adapt to the temperature. I forget what it was called. It's been a while since I played it. But anyway, he would sit there the whole time and was like, Why did you attack me? Like you can never attack these people. Ever. Yeah. They could have a humongous army and they'll be like, no, I'm done. <laughs> There's no way I can recover from this. Yeah. And then they'll draw this great card. And I'm like, look what you got. Isn't that good? Because you're trying to encourage them then. <laughs> right, Isn't that right, a great right, thing right. that just happened to you? <laughs> right. I guess. <laughs> what are other people saying? What are other people, uh, are people saying are saying, well, some, some people, uh, we, I do this all the time. Some people are calling this a hustler, not a martyr. But the hustler is the person who knows he's doing it. I'll do that all the time. I'll be yeah, like, right. oh, I'm not winning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you, I don't know that they play with anybody get, but who doesn't do that. They're like, I'm definitely winning. You should attack me. It's talking trash, you know. It's talking <laughs> yeah, trash, right? right. Uh, the first step is admitting you're the martyr. <laughs> <laughs> Says Brett Hunter. Um, uh, <laughs> so, 
You know, some people are, are blaming their significant others about whether that's <laughs> well. That everyone's pointing fingers on right, this right, one. Right, right, right. Bryce said, used to know a real bad martyr that we had to stop playing games with any sort of significant player interaction because it got to a ridiculous point. Oh, and that wow. is the case. If someone's That's really problem, bad at this, right. I'm like, all right, we're playing Euro games. Yeah. And with no confrontation whatsoever, right? Yeah. That's unfortunate. I saw a martyr one time play. We played Resistance with one. Oh, Were you guys in that geez. game? Oh, man. Uh, maybe. You don't need to bring that up. That's <laughs> but that's like the classic. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's an example of it. The martyr drinks their own Kool-Aid. That's it. Yes. That's exactly it. Winnie Weiner. Winnie the Weiner. Yeah, all right. But, yeah, I. this is just one of those things. I, this is, like, almost every one we talk about every week, I'll be like, yeah, this one annoys me. But that's this one is annoying if it continues after the game. Like after the game, so let's say we all play a game, and it's Sam, Z, me, and Martyr. Right. And Martyr comes in second place, and I came in fourth. But Martyr just goes on and on and on how if I had made different moves, <laughs> Martyr might have won, and blah, 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 blah. Meanwhile, I came in like extremely last, and I'm not complaining, so I'm getting a little tired of this. Sure. So That's the, where it really bugs me. Is there a way that you can approach this person then about their activity and how it's diffusing the rest of the group? From having fun. It's the same with I everything think you could else. Appro- you I think you could approach them very quickly and with something heavy, I think. And that would do it. <laughs> no, I found that with these people, it's what happens, I found most of the time, is that people stop attacking them because they don't want to hear the whining. Yeah, yeah but then they're like, and then that rewards it. That hurts right. the behavior. A, because they're like, oh, you know what? Me doing this works for me. Yeah. Because then that feeds the winning. So they'll probably win because no one's picking on them. You can't win. That's not, I mean, that's no, not a way so to do it. So the way to deal with these people is Everyone just go attack after them. them. <laughs> no. See what you're thinking? <laughs> yeah, you overload the system and make it fry itself out. That's how you do it. Like, it's overexposure uh, like, uh, therapy. What's my best move? Okay. Don't no. care. How, how do I pick you? on you, though? <laughs> I'm telling you. Well, there's another. Oh, there's a term for what we just said. That the guy who's that. Well, that's that, that's a future one. The, <laughs> the burn bridges guy. Or the burn. the pyrrhic victory. scorched earth. The scorched earth policy. Anyway, <laughs> that's the martyr. If you're watching yeah. this later on, let us know what you think in the comments. Absolutely. What else we got? What's up, internet? My name is Michael Cook. This is Board Game Evangelism, and we're here to spread the good news of face-to-face fun. Today we're going to take our second look at Keyflower after taking a look at tile laying last week. We're going to look at Set Collection. One of my favorite introductory Set Collection games is one of my favorite introductory games for anybody. And it's a filler called Coloretto. In Coloretto you have this agonizing decision of whether you want to take one of the sets that's already been built up or turn over a card to add to one of the sets and then risk it not making around the table to you or ruining a set that you were trying to build for yourself. Really interesting game. I love the push and pull. Great introduction to Set Collection. Another good set collection game that's going to incorporate some of the tiling we talked about last week is Lanterns. In Lanterns, you're going to choose between one of the three tiles that you have, and you're going to choose where to place it around the other tiles that have already been placed. And where you place it and how you orient it is going to determine what uh, cards you get and what cards your opponents may or may not get. And if you match colors, you're also going to get more cards for yourself. And those cards are your resources that you then turn in sets of to get points in different ways. So it's really interesting because you have to choose where you place things and also what you're going to be giving your opponents. And I think that's something that's really important in Keyflower, choosing what you're going to play that's going to help you and where it's going to help, as well as what you're going to be giving your opponents as you do different things in Keyflower. Another great game that uses tile laying and set collection is Takenoko. In Takenoko, you have these hexagonal tiles, like you have in Keyflower, and where you place them makes a big difference because sometimes you want to get a, a specific orientation of the same colors of tiles. So some, sometimes you want to spread out so that it's easier or clumped up in a specific way so that it's easier to get all the bamboo to the, to the correct height that you're trying to get to or to set them so that your panda can move through in a comfortable, easy manner to be able to pick up the types of bamboo that you need. So I think it's a great option to help you learn some of the spatial aspects that you need to be aware of in Keyflower with your hexagonal tiles. Until next time, you can let us know in the comments section below if there's any other set collection games you think that work well to build up to Keyflower. You can also find me at all the social media outlets at Macronova Games and enjoy the rest of your breakfast. Hello, and welcome back to Retro Board Game Corner. The game I'm going to show you today is based off of a movie. I'm going to give you a little hint here. I'm going to do a little scene of the movie. Let's see if you can figure it out. Here we go.
Action. It was an accident. About an hour ago, a small jet went down inside New York City. The president was on board. President of what? Did you get it? Well, here we have Escape from New York, published in 1981 by TSR. This is a two to four player game based off of the movie, and you know what you have to do. You have to find the president or the tape and get out of New York alive. Let me set this up and show you how it works. So this is what the game board will look like set up. First, every player is going to pick a color and they start in specific spaces. The green will start at the World Trade Center. The red will start at the east side, white over here at the museum, and blue over here at the Lincoln Center. You're also going to start the game with five equipment cards. Your pistol, which gives you a plus one to your combat. Your rifle, which gives you a plus two to your combat. A flare gun and a homer, which are one-time use cards. And your goal fire. When you complete your objective, this is how you're going to escape New York. If you did not end your move on a landmark, you will draw an encounter card as per step number two and then follow the encounter. For example, this says bandits. If you're on a red, orange, white, or green space, you will encounter the bandits. Now you can uh, decide to avoid, befriend, or fight them. Uh, you will need to roll above whatever number it is to do one of the things. Avoid, that's just what it means. You're just going to avoid that. You discard the card. If you successfully befriend them, the card becomes part of your hand, which gives you an added bonus during your combat. And if you fight them, you have to give roll uh, over a 5 to get rid of the card. If you end your turn on a landmark, you will go ahead and grab a clue card. Now, the object of the game is to either find the location of the president or find the location of the tape. And you use that by doing the clues. So, for example... The clue card says the president is at, the president is at, you need two matching ones, and it'll list three locations. You only have to match one location on each card, and then go to that spot, and then you'll either pick up the president or pick up the tape, whichever card you have. And then you will go back to your starting space where you started, use your goal fire to fly out of New York. Or if you have a map, there's four maps, you can go ahead and come to the appropriate bridge to escape New York. If you have done that successfully without another player ambushing, ambushing you for either the president or the tape, you have won the game. Escape from New York is probably one of my all-time favorite cult classic movies. First, I like to watch the movie, then I like to play the game. Well, that's all the time I have for now. If you have a comment, comment below, or you can tweet them to me at RetroBoardGamer. And as always, may your rolls be high. Hi, Mike Lisio from Solo Mode Games. Recently, I've been fortunate enough to be contacted by some publishers about featuring some solo games on my Solo Mode Games playthrough channel, and I thought that I would just kind of show you some of these titles that have come in that I'm looking forward to filming playthroughs of, in case you have any interest in them in the uh, near future. First, I just received this prototype for a game called Maquis. This is a solo-only worker placement game. I played, I want to say I played an app version of this you know, over a year ago, and I remember it being really interesting, so I'm looking forward to giving this one a run through. Uh, I also, and that is from, sorry, Side Room Games. Uh, I got something from Tomp, Toppet, Toppet Games. I'm obviously doing a great job with these uh, publishers, but Toppet Games sent me Donning the Purple, which is a really interesting King of the Hill game that has a solo variant with a Roman theme, and as a history teacher, I'm certainly intrigued by the theme. It looks pretty interesting to me as well. It's got a lovely ancient uh, European map on the back, and that's obviously going to get my attention. And so that's what I'm looking forward to. From Brotherwise Games, who you may well know from their Boss Monster series of games, I got a game called Call to Adventure. Um, and this one is interesting because it has a have potentially heavy storytelling element. What, the reason why I say potentially heavy is that really you kind of 
tell your own story at the end. You're playing cards that are going to allow you to kind of create a character and then at the end you're encouraged to kind of use the information on the cards to create a more well-rounded story uh, to, to give it a little bit more flavor. And then the last thing, uh, the big box, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to lift up, but one of my favorite solo games of last year was The City of Kings. And I just got sent some additional uh, material for this. I got some ally packs right here and right here. Yana and Kuma. I'll try to pronounce that one so I get some glare there. And then I also got the hero pack, which are the miniatures for the heroes, and then some side quests. And then this massive box that's just off camera is the main box for City of Kings, which has a tremendous amount of material just within it there. So these are all games that I'm hoping to get filmed relatively soon to be put on my Solo Mode Games channel. So if any of those interest you, keep an eye out because I'll be trying to get them up as soon as possible. Thank you so much for your time as always, and have a great day! Surprise! 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 surprise. Alright, here we go, here's the knife. <laughs> oh! The box Amber, is actually... It's my channel now! What are we doing? What is it? That would be a, a follicle. It's DNA on the box. That could be there part of the game. <laughs> <laughs> it's a go straight through. You're acting like that knife wielding robot from Futurama. Ha -ha! Ha -ha! I'm practicing my stabbing, Red. <laughs> All right. I don't know what this it's is. A card game. It's some sort of plastic creation. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Tom, what is this? <laughs> it's Skulk. What is this, Skulk? It's a game from... Oh, we just talked about this. Is that Prospero Hall Company? Yeah. Fate Lies Within. Okay, that's actually <laughs> that's actually a pretty cool looking box. That's the box? <laughs> that is so... Fate mean. Lies Within. It just looks like a cool prop to put on a shelf or something, but it looks like it opens up and reveals its back. secrets. Reveal your secrets to me, Creech. All right, hang on. We got it. Break it! <laughs> I don't think you can open it because if you could, then people could just get it off the shelf and open it. Oh, okay. We got to take it out of the box first. All right. Knuckle. All right. Knuckle mm. what? Brain? Yeah, knucklehead. Here, cut that thing at the bottom. Somebody knows. Now you what get to do doing. a little bit of cutting. Easy now. Ooh, I see marbles. I see pink and Ooh. blue. Cardboard and things. What is? A big old head. <laughs> <laughs> Leave that on. I think it stays on there. No, it doesn't. No, okay. All right, here's the other pieces. All right. Wow, why Sam's still opening the box. Oh, that's cool. The <laughs> foil. Wait, put a marble in his head. Okay. See where it comes out. Wait, wait where's it supposed to come out? There's Pretty no sure hole. That's not Find how out. It works. You're about to break it. What happened? Nothing happened. <laughs> All right, let's find out what's going on here. You open this up, and there's some sort of. Oh, okay. Oh, look into this mouth! <laughs> All right, so... Uh, <laughs> this is just a selector, I think. Yes, yeah. it is. It's got to be. Oh, so you put all the marbles in? Yeah, and then yeah. he like will give you one by being going like this. Yeah. Players vie for control to claim tiles. These are the tiles here. This is basically the hucky puck from that... Uh... All, right, all, right, all right, there we go. Sorry, y'all. Bluffing and challenging each other's yeah. bluffs will be key to success. Purpose. Make the right call and you'll gain influence. Now I'm gonna say, call the color. Yellow. Yellow. All right. Red. Uh, oh. Gotta shake it. Uh. White. Uh, now does that one go plaque. back up in? Player elimination. Um. There's one black marble and one white marble. If you draw one of these and tell the truth or bluff and claim to have drawn one without being challenged, do the following. If it's a black marble, add one to your influence. If it's a white marble, remove anyone influence from its owner. So, huh. Ah! There's nothing in it. Okay, go ahead. Black. Ah! Woo! My powers of whatever. I'm doing okay this week. Yellow. I, li ah! I like these. Woo! I like these. Go ahead. I like Another these. purple. Cool. Ah! Oh, I, don't, I, was, I was doing good. This these, is uh, this such is a cool really thing. This is really cool looking. I love the look of this. So this like, seems can, like a real can you light. store the whole game in the skull then, I'm assuming? I think so, yeah. 
That's a cool looking co box. I mean, yeah. If I saw this on the shelf, I would be tempted to get it. I'm telling you, that's neat. It's cool. You can leave it out. But it's like a pretty simple push your luck game, then kind of, or bluffing game. I think so. Someone said it's bingo for hipsters. Yeah, baby. I need to have a big old uh, iced it coffee. Looks like you can probably. Uh, a frappe macchiato or something. Ma macchiato? I don't know. I can't afford those things. Someone else, Gory Hound says it's a Pez dispenser. It kind of looks like a uh, Pez dispenser for, for gamers. Well, so let's shake it up. Is it, can you like change the color? All right, do it again. Yeah. Oh, oh, whoa! <laughs> it's also a weapon! <laughs> oh no, Sam found a new use for the game! <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> yes! Stop! No! Remove it! <laughs> Cut! Go to the next segment! <laughs> Hi, I'm Doug Jr. Doug the Third's not here right now, but you're still watching a Fellowship of Meeples with Doug and Doug Gaming. So you have eight or nine people show up for game night and you'd like to play something that everyone can be involved with, so what game can you play that can handle that many? Well, we're going to talk about some of our favorite games that can handle high player counts, starting with one of my favorites, Tortuga 1667. This little game can handle up to nine players, and it does it well. In Tortuga 1667, you are pirates. You're secretly loyal to either the French or the British team, and in the case of an odd number of players, you might be the lone Dutch player. Your goal is to have the most treasure in your team's hold. On your turn, you'll do one of four things. View two event cards to gain some knowledge, reveal an event card and resolve its action, point out two event cards and force another player to reveal one of those cards and then resolve it, or move to and from a rowboat. Why would you want to use a rowboat? Well, each of you pirates will have a job, which will change throughout the game. The captain can choose to attack the Spanish galleon and take its treasure. The crew of that ship votes to see if the attack will actually happen. The captain can also maroon any of the crew on Tortuga. The first mate can call for a mutiny to maroon the captain on Tortuga. The cabin boy, last in line, can move gold from one team's hold to the other. If you're the governor of Tortuga, you can call for a brawl. This will move two treasures from Tortuga to a ship determined by a majority vote. Play continues until the Spanish Armada shows up at the end of the event deck, at which time the team with the most treasure wins. This is a game that packs really small, but plays really big. Well, next week, we're going to be sharing with you one of Doug III's favorite high player count games, but we'd like to know what some of your favorite high player count games are. Let us know in the comments below, and until we see you next time, I'm Doug Jr. for Doug and Doug Gaming. Hi, it's Stella from Meeple University. On our channel, we do a lot of overview, how to play, playthrough, review, and vlog just like this one. Or sometimes, apparently, I do wargaming news too for Dan from No Animus here. Hi, Stella. Hi, Tarrant. You know, Tarrant, you know, I looked at you at a few pictures, and if I dropped 200 pounds, and shaved my beard, I'd look like you. If you missed last week's episode, we did a fun role reversal on Board Game Breakfast, where I took the role of Dan sharing my thoughts of war game, Lincoln, where I reviewed the rule book, the cheats, and the war. That was my take of war gaming news and Dan's take from Eurogame from our last week's segment. That Dan saying I forced him into doing Eurogame, huh? Someone nice like me? No way, right? Hey Dan. Yeah? Play more Euro games. No. War game is so brutal. You're nuts. And he plays Euro. And guess what? He plays the brutal Euro game. Robinson Crusoe. Still playing game with dead people. Ah, uh, Dan. Dan. Yeah. Do more Euro game. No. But you're good at it. Uh uh. So, what do you think? Do you want to hear Dan's take more on Euro games? Maybe let us know by writing in the comment sections below if you want Dan to cover both war and Euro games. You're nuts. Or maybe just leave him for war games. I like his sections anyway. Well, thanks for watching. If you'd like to check our other videos, please have a look at Meeple University on YouTube. Until next week. I'm 
gonna win. Hey everybody, welcome back to 10 for 10. We're gonna I'm play gonna a little win. game. I'm, I'm mixing it up this time. And we are going to do a game that is also technically trivia based, but really you guys should should know. I mean, you can guess, but you shouldn't know. The winner gets the skull. That's uh, not true. Sure, you can hold it no. till the end of the show. How about okay, that? that? How about that? All right, we're going to start with a card here in the center that says Terraforming Mars on it. And then the rest of these cards I'm going to just throw out. We're going to draft them, okay? Here's what you're trying to do. After you've drafted these, you're then going to play them out basically like timeline. Trying to put them in the right location oh, on, in a line. Okay. So what's the parameter? What's the parameter? What's the category? Box size. Nope. It is number of owned copies according to BGG. <laughs> All right. There's no. And way I will we even tell you what the number sure. for this one is. It's 47,000 people say they own Terra. 47,000? Why is Bonacore so cheap when he takes us out to eat? So there you <laughs> I'm go. Just kidding. I'm just kidding. He doesn't take us out to eat. So, 47,000. Now, Sam, I think you lost the last time, so I'm going to let you draft here Ooh. first. All right. We're going to put all these out. You got Star Realms, Caverna, Ticket to Ride, Code Names, Scythe, Dominion, Pandemic, Champions of Midgard, Lords of Waterdeep, and Blood Rage. You're just drafting one now, and you're going to play them later. So all I want you to do right now is pick one that you think you, you know where it goes. Just go ahead and take one. Put it face down in front of you. All right, Tom. That was what I was going to take. <laughs> go ahead and take one. Put it face down in front of you. I will take code names. Code names. Sam, take another one. Uh, geez, Louise. Um. Okay, put it face down on top of that one. Tom. I'll take champions. All right. <sighs> Sam went high. I went low. <laughs> 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 so not this one, obviously. I That's know, our start. I'll take Terraforming Mars. Yeah, right. It's like, ah, oh, no, no. All right. Caverna. All right, go ahead. <clears throat> start. Oh, I'm just guessing now. Pandemic. Oh, you're guessing anyway, I, I believe me. Uh, we all are, I think. No, I know which, I'm pretty sure I know which one of these is number one. <laughs> I think you're crazy. All right, go ahead. And then that one, Tom. <laughs> I have no idea where this one is. <laughs> all right, now, don't, don't shuffle your cards. Don't yeah. shuffle? Okay, Do I didn't. not shuffle them. Starting from you, you reveal the top one, and you add it where you think it would go here in the line. Wanna, can I reveal the bottom one? Nope. That's Information very, not given. That's on purpose. All right, so I'm revealing Scythe. That's right. Um, this, 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 this is so what? This is 47,000. 47, if you put it above it, that means there are, there are more, more copies listed as owned on BGG, whatever that means. <laughs> hey, and wait. then below means fewer copies. I'm going to go below. All right, that is incorrect, which means you are going to take it and put it at the bottom of your stack. Okay. Tom, you're up. Huh? Whoever runs I would out have of also cards. I said below. That makes you feel better. Whoever now. runs out of cards first <laughs> is going to be the winner. Lords War Deep. I will also say below. That is correct. Mm. So we're not giving numbers out though at all until the end. Would you like me to give you the numbers? No, nah, <laughs> no, nah, we'll wait to the end. I can give you the numbers right now. If it's right, I'll give you the numbers. How about that? Well, if we're yeah, if we're playing it like timeline, timeline does give you the numbers when you place it in there because that's how you can tell whether it's right or wrong. Well, I will tell you what you just did. That was the smallest gap by far. This has forty-seven thousand. This has forty-six thousand owners. Oh my <laughs> word! <laughs> okay. Okay. So, um, I, I'm assuming we can put them in between. Oh, absolutely. Which yes. is okay. Absolutely. Um, but so, well, uh, since I just said that. You know Information given to Sam. Yeah. Yes. Thank I like you. the caller. I, I have a handicap. It's all right. Uh, thank you. <laughs> well, that's Appreciate true. It. Star Realms. Um, I, I've got to go below. That is correct. That is forty-one thousand copies. Okay. Interesting. I would have put that higher. So there you go. Well, because it's cheaper. Yeah. Pandemic. Well, <laughs> that's going up there. Come on now. One hundred and twenty thousand <laughs> copies owned. <laughs> okay. So let's do this. <laughs> What All right, got? who have I got now? Blood Rage. Ah, Above Pandemic. I want to put it up here, <laughs> but I know that's probably <laughs> not the truth. Uh, Come on now. 47,000. Man. Well, how many were in the Kickstarter? Like 6,000. <laughs> <laughs> so just add those. Yeah, that's uh, it. To the 200 they sold after. This is a hard call because you know there's a lot of people like it, but how many copies are actually out actually in the wild? owned, yeah. How many I'm people went? Sure. This was this was what again? That one is forty-one thousand. Forty-one thousand. 
Um, man. Mm -hmm. It's a tough one. What are you thinking? I'm going to go down here. That's correct. There are 30,000 copies listed. Because it's garbage. No, it's not. All right. Caverna. See, now, Caverna is a big popular game, but mm -hmm. I don't think it's so expensive. <clears throat> That's the problem. So I'm going to stick it between Blood Rage and Star Realms. That's wrong. Put it back at the bottom of your pile. Dun, dun, dun. Not even like some good try, but <laughs> just that's <laughs> wrong. Wrong. A solid try. Dominion. Woo! 47,000. That's correct. 120. 120. Correct. I think you shouldn't even look at those two. Try between Blood ah, Rage. Ah, 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 <laughs> I'm going to go up here. Ooh. That's wrong. Back the and now you know where it goes, pile. though, so I don't want to hear nothing. Yeah. All right. What do I got? Champs of Midgard. Not even hesitating. That's correct. There are 12,000 listed. I f this is the uh, I'm, I'm betting this is the lowest one. I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure. That's okay. why I took it. Ticket to ride. More than Pandemic or less, you think? Yeah, I can do it. Come on. They've yeah, yeah, it's like 5 million sold. <clears throat> That's wrong. What? Board Game Geek is not representative of people in general. I agree, but um, <laughs> oh that's, my what, goodness. that's why that, we know that more than 120,000 people own this game. But okay. they're not on BGG, I guess. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Bunch Take of it. Put code it on names. the bottom, yeah. I did, I did, I did. See, here's another one. I know code names should, should be at the top. Yes. Although, this is... Again, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Is this counting... Just Legacy? That game. No. Okay. I just went to that page and I looked at the number owned. All right, all right, all right. <sighs> See, if I guess wrong now, it's going to be harder once yours comes out. I'm going to go with the highest all the way at the top. That's wrong. All right, <laughs> fine, fine. I think this is stacked. I think Z might be trolling. <laughs> the numbers us. are the numbers. I did not <laughs> no, it's because, mess with it. It's because BGG are they're heavy gamers, so. Did not mess with all it right, just Number to be one, like, uh -huh. higher than Pandemic. Scythe. Have fun fitness. I, what, I tried putting it here. You did, correct. But is it between these two? Uh, I'm going to say yes. Well, it has to be. That is correct. Because? Psy, that's also a very small gap, 47,000, 49,000 okay. copies owned. These numbers are rounded, obviously. They are, of course. All right, Caverna. Oh, he's going to win on his turn. <laughs> that's stupid. Oh, he's got cards. No, I got he's two. Got two. Oh, he got two. Okay, Caverna. You're winning Yeah, right but now. I have no idea where Caverna goes. Uh, it goes somewhere in the column here. Thank you, thank Just you, trying Dad. Trying to help out as a good host. <laughs> to I'm gonna <laughs> say Caverna. I'm gonna go for the other moon. I'm gonna put it above Scythe and between that and Pandemic. That is erroneous, my good man. All right. Woo! Well, Sam, I got a chance. Sam believed me because he was moving go the cards around. That's right. That is 87,000 copies listed as owned. Right, I'm gonna take code names and stick it between Pandemic and Dominion. That's wrong. Oh. Oh. All right, Sam, this might be it for all the marbles, Take it baby. To ride. So, again, 120. 120. 87. 87. 49. 49. Uh, do um, I'm going to put it here. That's not right. Ah. Really? Jeez. All right, Code Names is now going between Dominion and Side. That's correct. Yeah! Codename says 78,000. Mm. I just made Sam's harder! So again, 87, 78, 49. If he gets this, though, you are done. So you're saying Dominion, then Ticket to Ride, then, then code, code names. names, yes. That's not right, Sam. All right, Caverna! <laughs> he's still, uh, he's still <laughs> plucking away at this, though. Let's you're do good. Caverna! What do you okay. got? I know it's higher than Champions. It's got to be higher than Blood Rage. No, it doesn't. Why am I helping you? Shut up, I'm shut up, Sam. <laughs> shut your mouth. I'm putting it between Star Realms and Waterdeep. You're also taking it right back. What? Yeah. Okay, come on now. Come okay, on it's now. It's got to be here. Below code names, above, above side. side. Yes. That is correct. There are 77,000 <laughs> <000 laughs> listed. That is crazy. 78? Absolutely 77. crazy. That's crazy because Ticket to Ride is easily on this. Well, they've sold a million sold. plus, right? I mean, I'm sure. Oh, five million. Well, that's, that's including all their Ticket to Ride stuff. Them, yeah. But still, yeah. you know, at least two million of that. All I got to say is Pandemic's at the top. I don't care. And Caverna <laughs> Tom would go between these two. Okay. They are 29 listed. <laughs> 
Twenty-nine thousand, well, no, thirty thousand, though. So very. I close. had that in mind. I said it was expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I put it here, though, right? Yes. Yeah. So there you go, Sam. Your trophy for the day. <laughs> <laughs> and that's ten for ten. Let's check out some more contributors. All right. Happy breakfast, everyone. Today I'm going to talk to you about timeline events. I think it's the smallest game in my collection and is definitely sort of pocket size game. Uh, it's 55 cards, it's a standalone pack, uh, sometimes maybe referred to as a booster, but it is standalone. And you are going to be, as the name might suggest, forming a timeline throughout the game. Each player starts with four cards, and they're going to be number or year side down. So you know what the event is, but you don't know what the year is. On your turn, you play it into the timeline. If it's bef uh, to the left of a card, it's before it in history or the same year. And then to the right is the same year or after it. So you don't need to know the exact dates. And that's what I like about this game. You can be kind of good at it by just guesstimating history. You don't need to know the exact year that the FIFA first FIFA World Cup happened in but you can probably guess that it happened after the Trojan War. It's first to get rid of all their cards, so it's a nice simple one. There's really no teaching, it's put the game in front of people and they can understand how to play. So it works really well with everyone. The deck is small, 55 cards. That means you're going to remember what they are if they, the years, if they come up more than once in a game session. So, after 15, 20 minutes, maybe two rounds of the game, you're probably packing it up, putting it away. The design of it, the timeline is really fun. My issue is that remembering the dates problem. Um, it kind of makes me want more timeline games to merge them together, uh, but then it kind of breaks the really small package that I like. So it's a real mixed bag. Enjoy it, um, definitely give it a go but you're going to want more than just one for it to really stay strong. Anyway, that's Timeline Events, and I'm Oliver East, signing out. Hello, we're Board Game Opinions. My name's Jonathan. I'm Steve. I'm Nathan. I'm Amy. And this is our speed quiz, where contestants attempt to guess as many possible answers for a particular category as they can within the time limit. And this week's category is roles in pandemic so this is the base pandemic plus any expansions for the base pandemic so we're not including like cthulhu pandemic not pandemic legacy just base pandemic plus expansions and i'll tell you now there are 23 possible roles they could guess here so there are plenty available uh, if you pick a role that i've not heard of because i haven't played with some of the expansions you get two points otherwise it's one point happy mm -hmm. all right and we're gonna start with nathan today off you go uh, medic Yes, that's uh, one point. Dispatcher. Yes, scientist. That's one point. Scientist is a point. Um, colonel. Uh, colonel is two points. Quarantine specialist. Yes, that's two uh, points. Researcher. Is it one point? Uh, pilot. Yes, it's yes. two points. Um, I'm impressed. Gosh. Uh, pass. Operations expert. Uh, yes, that's one point. Yeah. Uh, chauffeur. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, vaccines expert. Uh, no. Virologist. Virologist is ah. correct. You get one point for that. Okay. Okay. Policeman. <laughs> no. I'm going to open it up to the floor now. Pharmacologist. Uh, you, I'll give you that. Pharmacist is one of them. Okay. Oh. Doctor. No. Nurse. No. Um, evacuation mm. specialist. Uh, no. <laughs> You got only ten seconds left. Uh, <laughs> a few other ones that are similar. Um, <laughs> plague guy. <laughs> <laughs> and that's time. That's a no. All right, let me talk about the scores. I'm see how they did. All right, the scores are in, and uh, Amy got three, Nathan got five, and Steve got six. Hey. Steve wins again. How is he doing it? So that puts him on a two wins now. So it's two nil nil to Steve. Let me add that to the score. Were there any that you thought of that they didn't get? There were quite a lot that you could have possibly got there. All right, thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye. See Bye. You. And
that's it for another Board Game Breakfast. Thanks Very so cool. much to Sam and Z and all our fantastic, amazing contributors. Many who, if you ever watch us live, come on and talk to you live while their segments are going off. Yep. That's right. Um, so, our pledge manager for our Kickstarter, if you haven't done that yet, it's closing next Friday. That's a week and one day. So, if you're waiting around, wait no more. <laughs> um, other than that, Lots of other cool things. We'll be back today at 2 o'clock. That's in three hours with our top 10 Take That games where we will slap each other with <laughs> balloons. That's not true. Ooh. Slap each other with balloons. I'm on a mission to go get balloons. Boom. Or maybe. Anyway, Boom. until next time, I'm Tom Vassal. I'm Z Garcia. Thank you. Sam Healy. See you on the flip side, folks. Thanks for watching Board Game Breakfast. Tune in each week for your daily dose of gaming goodness with Tom Vassal and all the gang. Until next time, I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching Board Game Breakfast, a Dice Tower production, sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., an amazing place to buy board games. Cool stuff in stock at CoolStuffInc.com.